Look at this knockoff kicker logo right here. Are you happy with yourself? You guys got me the thousand likes. I had to buy another Timu product. It was mixed. Some people wanted subwoofers. Some people wanted speakers, head units. So I've got something a little bit different in this box. It's definitely a throwback. So what do you say we open this thing up and see what kind of good, bad, or ugly product comes out of here? Uh, with that being said, let's just get straight to it. There it is, car subwoofer. Form impedance, 91 dB sensitive. That's pretty good. Frequency response, 50 hertz to 20 kilohertz. That lets you know something's up. Uh, this isn't a regular car subwoofer. You cannot play up to 20 kilohertz with a regular car subwoofer. The size and centimeters are 40 by 17 by 28. I will convert that to inches for you and let you see it right there. Alas, it's time to open it up and see what's actually inside of here. Behold, the Timu subwoofer with a tweeter, a straight up knockoff kicker logo. What I couldn't tell in the pictures for the description, this looked like a second tweeter here. It's not, I'll get you a close up shot. It's just a piece of plastic with the grill, so. All right, let's kind of go over what we have here. This is a built-in MP3 amplifier. This is kind of like one of the amplifiers you buy at Parts Express that does a little bit of everything. You can see right here, it has a 110 volt plug, so it comes with the plug. You do have your auxiliary ends left and right. You have an SD card input. You have a USB input. You have an on and off switch right here. Then you have your 12 volt switch, and it does come with a 12 volt power cord here, so you can hook it up. You do get a little bit of wiring for your power and ground, and then some RCAs here. You have a remote in right here. I suspect that's for a 3.5. Then you have a base treble. You can see that it is ported. Little remote control, but let me show you this remote control. This thing is like the chintziest of chintzies. It is what it is. I definitely am sad that I spent 80 bucks on this, but I did it for you guys, so let's hook it up. All right, I've got it all hooked up. I've kind of done some trial runs to see what it sounds like, get used to the features myself. So let me start by, by showing you the first issue I noticed, and that is a hum when it's not playing anything. So let me turn this up, full volume, and then just a slight crank back. Let me get you closer to the source so you can actually hear it. You should have been able to hear that slight hum. It's not noticeable unless you turn it up pretty, if you have it at a pretty high volume, whenever you're uh, not playing anything, then you hear it. At lower volumes, you can still hear it at middle volume, but it's, it's not noticeable. I do wanna point something out. You know, we're gonna play a track here. Okay, so you should be able to hear that. Now when I adjust the bass and treble, watch this, at higher volumes, if you touch this bass knob, you can have the bass go all the way out. And well, I'll try to get a demonstration of that at higher volume so you can hear it. You hear that? It took it all the way out. There it goes. Just did it again. If I hold it, watch. So that's one of the issues that I noticed while playing with it. All right, now we're gonna do an amp dyno of the little built-in amp. Just gonna do the forearm test. That should suffice. I don't know what it's rated. I don't think doing the 8-ohm test would show us much more, but we are using the plug power. So we have the 120 volt. I don't expect a lot. I expect about head unit level of power. We're full tilt. 
and we have 10 watts at 4 ohms. So let me go ahead and pause. Okay, let's try on the real-time power mode and see what it looks like. 10 watts, 9 watts. This is should be pink noise. 6 watts. All right, we get 11 watts at 4 ohms that way. It is pretty much exactly like we expected. Head unit power, actually a little less. It is a 10-watt monoblock amp. So I have not found a way to cycle through all the modes without using this remote. One thing with this remote, it will not work from here. You have to be directly pointed at this to make it work. Line in FM tuner. The, so the Bluetooth device is ready to pair. All right, we're going to pair this up here. Bluetooth device. Let me find it on my phone here. The Bluetooth device is connected us successfully. All right, now let's try a track really quick. All right, that works. Let me go ahead and pause it. Music. That is the modes that it comes with. So you do get Bluetooth, you get FM tuner, three forms of line in. You can do an SD card, a USB. I think we're on to going ahead and doing a few sound demos so you guys can hear. All right, we've got it opened up. So I learned a few things here. One, this is not a tweeter. This cover makes it look like a domed tweeter, but it's actually a little mid-range, which explains why you get a little bit more width in your music. This is definitely playing lower than a normal tweeter would. The inside of the box is sealed. As you can see here, it's actually sealed very well. Let's go ahead and test the impedance on these drivers and see where they're at. 4.5 ohms, and we're, you know, four ohms 3.9 ohms exactly on the mid-range. Overall, it's kind of what I expected it to be. Nothing too crazy. The setup looks like a full range signal through the woofer, then jumping over to the mid-range where you have a capacitor right here, and then this plays to its natural roll off. All right, final thoughts. What I think about this Timu subwoofer. So it's not a subwoofer, it's a woofer with a mid-range driver amp that can do a few things. Should you spend 80 bucks on this? No. As a car subwoofer, absolutely not. I would never recommend anybody order this as a car subwoofer. Now, I think there's one instance where this might be worthwhile. If you're gonna use it as a Bluetooth speaker, it is actually for 80 bucks louder than most $80 or $100 Bluetooth speakers. It has more bass than those. It does have its quirks. I showed you with the bass knob. You know, I did put a little contact cleaner on there. Still did the same thing. So it's just a cheap piece of equipment that they threw everything together and made it into an all-in-one package. That being said, it's not a subwoofer. Don't buy it as a subwoofer and uh, don't let T move fool you. So I hope you do enjoy these videos and go ahead and hit that subscribe button like, share, comment, do all that stuff, and I will catch you on the very next video. A big shout out to all my supporters, but a special shout out goes to the Six Star Award members, El Fuego Audio, Baba, Corna, Scott McCord, David Koslick, Scott Dielbeck, Dennis Cromwell Jr., Box Boy Audio Sound Solutions, Travis McLennan, William Berg, 2001 Monolithic, Joaquin Juarez, Old School Stereo, Living Loud with Andy, Thomas Marshall, Kevin Lautner, D. Stewart, and Jesus Tires. You can join the team for as little as $2 a month and get exclusive Patreon-only content, 
behind the scenes content and access to the Patreon only monthly live stream. So if any of this interests you, check me out at patreon.com slash high five. Oh, oh.